Lately, the United Kingdom has been a hotbed of good, promising, optimistic news, hasn't it? Oh, God, I want to crawl into a shoe forever. But anyway, over in Blighty, the UK gambling watchdog has told MPs that loot boxes and FIFA Ultimate Team Packs do not fall under its jurisdiction, not currently viewing these gambling mechanics as gambling. Even though, let's face it, it is gambling, isn't it? Because it behaves exactly like gambling. According to the Gambling Watchdog, there is no official way to monetize what is found inside loot boxes, therefore it cannot be gambling. In order for them to consider it gambling, the prize inside has to either be money or have an official monetary value. The Watchdog did admit that there is a secondary market where in-game items are sold, but because that isn't official, it isn't strictly gambling, although though the commission did admit there are some serious concerns about kids playing these games. Now the thing is, this news isn't really all that surprising. I've made a point to mention in many of my videos that getting any sort of regulation off the ground here is a little bit difficult because we're dealing with multi-billion dollar corporations. They've got a lot of money, therefore a lot of political clout. Electronic Arts has been working overtime to defend and protect gambling mechanics in its games, and the law is a slow mover, it's not caught up to technology, this is something I've talked about for years, this is why excessive, rampant, unethical in my opinion, microtransactions in games have gotten away with so much bullshit, because it's all new emergent technology and the law just isn't equipped to understand that. Existing gambling laws just weren't written to ever consider the idea that a football game for ages 3 and up would have premium prize boxes in them. Going by strict legal definition it's no surprise that the Gambling Commission has said that it isn't gambling. It was interesting and heartening to see countries like Belgium say, wait, 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 no, this does behave exactly like gambling, therefore it's gambling, but that isn't something I've expected other countries to do across the board. And let's face it, Britain now has this guy as a Prime Minister, so I'm not going to expect any stunning political takes out of the island just yet. This idea that a prize has to either be money or have a official monetary value in order for it to be gambling is pretty much the shield for video game publishers right now. This is what allows them to employ all of the psychological and financial tricks of gambling up to that point of a financial prize without ever crossing it. But because they only need to avoid that one pitfall, they're allowed to have systems in their games that replicate the feel and the impact of gambling without being technically classified as such. The BBC reports, Speaking at the Department for Culture, Media and Sport Select Committee, Gambling Commission Chief Executive Neil MacArthur admitted that there were significant concerns around children playing video games in which there were elements of expenditure and chance. However, he added that under current legislation it did not classify as gambling. There are other examples of things that look and feel like gambling that legislation tells you are not, such as some prize competitions, but because they have free play or free entry, they are not gambling, but they are a lot like a lottery, he said. So I'm not going to do what Electronic Arts did in Belgium and start saying that I don't agree with their interpretation of the law. They went by their strict definitions and this is what they came away with. But I do nonetheless think that maybe definitions need to change or broaden, maybe laws need to update themselves because outside of that one disqualifier, loot boxes do behave exactly like gambling. I said way back in 2016 after Overwatch popularised loot boxes that I will always colloquially consider them gambling even if legally they are not because if it walks like a slot machine if it quacks like a slot machine then it's probably a slot machine in the intervening years i have now talked to and published the stories of enough problem gamblers and shopping addicts to know that whether the law considers them gambling or not loot boxes pose a significant problem i'm sorry but i've talked to gambling addicts who have had to stop playing certain video games who feel chased by loot boxes is, and other forms of aggressive, psychologically addictive monetization, as they're followed from game to game by these, frankly, disgusting business practices. In the past few years, my disappointment and my disgust with the video game industry, with the mainstream AAA video game industry, has shot through the frigging roof. But I don't consider 
This decision by the UK Gambling Commission to be a case of Electronic Arts and its filthy ilk winning. Because EA, Epic Games, etc, they had to nonetheless sit in front of that Gambling Commission and defend themselves. And they looked like assholes in the process. So what we look at as, as surprise mechanics um, but I think it's important to look at this. So, uh, if, if you go to if you go to a uh, I don't know what your version of Target is, but a, a store that sells a lot of toys, and you do a search for surprise toys, what you'll find is that this is something people enjoy. They enjoy surprises, and so it's it's something that's been part of toys for years. Whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA of course is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team and our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun, enjoyable to people. From a legal standpoint, Electronic Arts, Epic Games, etc. can defend themselves all day long, but from a moral and an ethical standpoint, they don't have any legs. And anyone who watched EA and Epic flail around in front of the UK Gambling Commission will be able to see that. When EA's legal VP Kerry Hopkins was asked whether she considered loot boxes ethical, she didn't have a real answer. All she could do was desperately try and rebrand loot boxes as surprise mechanics and say that loot boxes were quite ethical without anything backing that up because there is nothing to back that up. Electronic Arts can whip up a false equivalence between loot boxes and panini stickers or kinder eggs, but anyone with half a brain sees through that line of shite. And while the UK Gambling Commission has not found FIFA packs and loot boxes to be gambling, chickens are nonetheless coming home to roost. These so-called AAA game publishers now have an ongoing fight on their hands. Legislators, politicians, and news reporters are starting to take an increased interest in these inherently shady business models. As we've discussed on this channel, the BBC recently published two reports about children spending money on these games, cleaning out bank accounts and being tricked into spending money on fake currency without realising they were spending any real money in the process. A lot of what I've talked about, a lot of what I've warned about in the past few years are starting to get real attention. People are finally finally taking this shit seriously. And that's really all I ever wanted. I've said all the time that I don't necessarily push for loot boxes to be regulated, but I do want this stuff taken seriously. I do want us to start looking at and taking seriously the psychological effect that deliberately designed psychologically manipulative monetization has on people. Now these conversations are finally starting to happen. And I would like it if games media as a whole took it more seriously as well. It seems like mainstream news reporters, like those at the BBC, care a bit more about it than the gaming press. I think that Electronic Arts, in any interview, in any preview event, whenever someone talks to them, should face some hard bloody questions, always aggressively, all the time. Exactly why do you consider loot boxes ethical? And don't just say it's because people like them, that's an appeal to popularity. Why do you find it acceptable that FIFA is rated for kids aged 3 and up, when you need to share buying restriction guidelines for parents, and those parents have to strictly supervise their kids even more than they'd have to with a game like Doom? What do you say to people with problem gambling struggles and shopping addictions that have had to stop playing your games for their own self-bloody protection? And what are you going to do when this completely, evidently unsustainable market collapses all around you? Or, as I suspect, do you just not fucking Care. There are serious concerns here. The UK Gambling Commission knows there are serious concerns here, even if it doesn't consider loot boxes to fall within its jurisdiction. And that sort of concern without a jurisdiction is how you get other commissions, other watchdogs set up. And some sort of additional regulatory board for video games that deal with the business side of things rather than just the artistic content isn't something I'd rule out seeing happen. The ESRB and Peggy are woefully ill-equipped and certainly unwilling to seriously consider the harmful impact of predatory monetization. Something more savvy might need to step in. Because whatever happens, I don't think all of this can continue. Not at the rate it's going. Exploitative in-game monetization has gotten completely out of hand.
end. And as we're seeing, with businesses struggling to maintain their growth, it's not just harmful to the players, it's hurting the actual companies themselves. The alleged triple I video game industry is in a complete and total state. I've seen many avid game fans talk about how exhausted they are by what these video games are doing. Companies like Electronic Arts have cashed in any critical credibility they have to chase short-term gains, squirting out half-baked crap like Anthem, and finding them themselves in the middle of community shitstorms when they push their monetization far too far, far too quickly, like we saw with Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's gotten completely out of control and someone needs to put a leash around these companies' necks. Corporations like to think that they're people. They're bloody not. If they have to be compared to something, they're more like wild, hungry animals, and they shouldn't be interacting with real people without significant precautions in place. And you know what? People make fun of those who say it, but I'm gonna keep saying it because it's true. Fuck EA. Genuinely. There are more than enough reasons to share that sentiment. Fuck EA. Shameless, parasitic, exploitative bastards.